Hello and welcome. My name is Zachary Gillette and I'm an application engineer based in the United Kingdom. In this video, we will learn the preparation of anatomical models for finite element analysis using the MIMICS Innovation Suite. In this tutorial, you will discover mesh refinement, the ability to create non-manifold assemblies, the creation of surfaces for boundary conditions and loads, the functionality within MIS to assign materials based off of the relationship between intensity of images and the density of tissue, and then finally, the ability to export meshes for abacus simulation. To begin with, you can see in front of you that I already have a MIMICS project file open. Within this MIMICS project file, the scapula as well as the humeral component of the shoulder joint has already been segmented. But not only that, the glenoid and the humeral implant has already been placed. So that's pre-surgical planning has already been carried out. So this will be our starting point for this particular workflow. For this tutorial, I'm only going to work with the glenoid implant as well as the scapula. So the first thing that I need to do is simply go up to my control panel at the top and click on this export to 3MATIC button and then select my scapula along with my glenoid implant final. And then click OK and of course, Freematic will automatically fire up. Now, as you can see, we both have our glenoid implant final entity along with our scapular entity now in exactly the same virtual location or virtual space as it was in Freematic. Now, of course, the whole purpose of this workflow is that we want to optimize this mesh of both the glenoid implant as well as the scapula for simulation within Abacus. So the first thing that we're going to do is to simply toggle on the filled with triangle edges. So that way you'll be able to see the mesh and how the triangles um, actually look. Since non-conforming surfaces, such as the surface between the glenoid implant and of course the scapula, tend to create high stress concentrations, resulting of course in unrealistic loading situations, it's very important that the meshes of both the implant and the bone have shared nodes at the interface. And how we're going to address this issue is of course to create a non-manifold assembly. However, prior to creating a non-manifold assembly, it's always a really good idea to, of course, remesh all of the surfaces with similar quality parameters. So i.e. having the mesh belonging to the implant final having the same quality as the scapula. And how we're going to do this is simply go up to our uniform remeshing, select both of our entities, and then we will reset the toggle triangle edge length to two, and then simply hit apply. And then you'll see that live update in the window. So now you can see how the meshes are all a lot more uniform. Now both entities have similar mesh qualities, we can now pr proceed to create our non-manifold assembly. To do this, if we go up to our um, control panel at the top, still within the remesh tab, we can simply left click on create non-manifold assembly. Now for my main entity, I'm going to select my scapula, my intersecting entity, I'm going to select my glenoid. Then simply if you hit apply, you can see how the creation of non-manifold assembly then creates a brand new entity within your object list. Within this brand new entity, within our object tree, you can see how the creation of a non-manifold assembly actually creates three separate surface sets. So you can see how we have our main entity, of course, our scapula, and then we've got a surface set specifically for our glenoid, but then finally, we've then got a separate surface set for the interface between the scapula and the glenoid. And notice if I zoom in to the boundary, of course, between the glenoid and the scapula, we now have nodes being shared by, of course, the implant, the glenoid, and then the scapula itself.
Now we have our non-manifold assembly created, we can then look into further refining the mesh, specifically around areas where there's going to be areas um, of interaction, of course, between the scapula and the glenoid. To do this, what we're going to do is instead of using the uniform mesh optimization tab, is to simply use the adaptive. So for the entities, I'm going to select my non-manifold assembly. I'm going to select my target triangle length to be three millimeters. But here, what you're able to do is you're able to input into 3Matic specific surface sets in which you want the target triangle length to be even finer. So for this, what I'm going to select is my surface list. And then here, I'm going to input my glenoid implant final along with my interface glenoid implant final scapula surface set. I'm going to keep the triangle edge length to one millimeter and then to simply keep the influence area to zero with a 30% growth rate. And it's always important to, of course, click add in this step to add these surface sets to this overview list. Once you've done that, you can simply go ahead and click apply. So here now you can see that in areas ar around the glenoid implant, there of course is a lot finer mesh than everywhere else within the scapula. It's of course a lot larger element sizes. Now that we've created our non-manifold assembly and then further optimized the mesh of our non-manifold assembly, it's now time to actually split the non-manifold assembly into its constituent parts. To do this, you simply go up again with it still within the remesh tab and click on split non-manifold assembly. You can simply select the scapular non-manifold assembly and then click apply. As you can now see, now that we've split our non-manifold assembly within our object tree, we have two brand new separate parts. So here, for example, if I click on fill wire frames, you can now see how we've got two separate entities. So for example, if I hide the glenoid, we now see how not only do we have a refined mesh where the glenoid implant will be sitting, but of course, there are shared nodes between the interface of the glenoid implant and of course, the scapula. Now, of course, all of the steps leading up to this stage here have all been associated with prepping our model for abacus uh, simulations. But building upon that, what we can also do is, of course, we can identify certain surfaces that further down the line within abacus, we can, of course, use as boundary conditions or, of course, use them as surfaces to apply directly a load to. So with my scapula um, model, along with my glenoid uh, model showing here, if I'm, for example, wanting to isolate this specific surface here, if I just left click and drag that, I can then isolate that surface directly in the object tree. So now I can simply go and rename this to load surface. Now, of course, when we come to bring these models back into mimics and export them, as an input file for Abacus, all of these naming conventions will be saved and of course carried into Abacus once you've imported the file over. And then building upon that, if you're wanting to specifically isolate regions of the scapula that you want to fix um, and apply a boundary condition to in Abacus, you can of course go through the mark wave brush tool, for example, and mark certain areas within which you would like to encaster, for example, as a boundary condition. And as you can see, this is now separated as a separate surface as well, only this time underneath the scapula object tree. So now you can then rename this to boundary condition 
in Castor, for example. The final step is now to create a volumetric mesh for both our glenoid entity as well as our scapula entity. To do this, I'm going to click on Create Volume Mesh. And then, as you can see, that I have my glenoid implant final highlighted in the object tree. The entity will be automatically inputted here. I'm going to select my element type to TEP4. And then my control edge length I'm going to have checked on. And then I'm going to change my maximum edge length to three, three millimeters. And then keep everything else the same. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Then I'm going to repeat the exact same process, only this time for the scapula. And as you can see, those two operations have been carried out. And I can check that they've been carried out because now if I expand my glenoid implant final, for example, I now have a volume list and we have our volume zero present here. In order to better visualize the volumetric mesh of, for example, our glenoid implant, we can actually go in and alter the color of the glenoid implant itself. And then, for example, if we then go to the volume zero within the um, broken down glenoid implant final tree, we can then select visible and use part color. So then when we go up to our section list, we can then, of course, clip our specific model and then siphon through that clipping along the Y plane and you can see how our volumetric mesh is taking place. Now that we have created our volumetric mesh and then inspect it to validate its accuracy, the next step is of course to then export our volumetric meshes back into Mimics so then we can carry out the material assignment based off of the intensity of the images, which of course correlates the density of the tissue. Prior to bringing in the volumetric meshes of both the glenoid and scapula, the first thing that I'm gonna quickly do is to simply rename both of these. So as you can see, I've renamed my glenoid to glenoid volumetric mesh and the same for the scapula. So in order to bring them into Mimics, I'm simply going to left click on the scapula volumetric mesh and then holding down control, I can select the glenoid volumetric mesh and then I'm going to hold down control C, revert back to my initial Mimics project file and then simply hold control V and then they will be then pasted directly into my Mimics project file. Now that we have our volumetric meshes for both our glenoid implant and scapula, it's now time to assign the materials. To do so, I'll begin with the scapula copy I'll right click and then left click on materials, which will then bring up this material assignment pop up window. For this, I'm going to use a predetermined lookup file. So I can simply go down to my bottom, left click on the lookup file, and then simply search for the .xml file, which, as you can see here, I have already saved. So I can left click on open and it will automatically input the already predetermined mechanical properties of the likes of such as trabecular and cortical bone, for example. So just on the various three different materials that I've predefined, the first material here handles the tetrahedrons outside of the original mask, and of course have negative Hounsfield units associated with the pixels. My material two covers the tetrahedrons corresponding, of course, the trabecular bone, and then finally, for material type three, it simply accounts for the cortical bone. So all of these have already been predetermined, and then I've simply clicked on Save Lookup File to then use further down the line for any upcoming simulations. Now, all I need to do is simply click Apply. As you can see, I can now visualize the material properties of my scapula. So I'll hide my humeral components. And then as well as that, I'll hide the implant. 
Now that we have assigned materials for the scapula based off the grayscale values, it's now time to do exactly the same thing, only this time for the glenoid implant volumetric mesh. So I'll simply right click on materials and then I'll bring up the material assignment. Only this time, of course, we're working with the glenoid implant, implant final. Instead of, of course, using grace value based um, material assignment method for this, because of course we know that our glenoid implant is created of titanium, we can then of course choose the homogeneous option. For the density, we're simply going to choose 4,500. The Young's modulus will be 115,000. And the Poisson's coefficient will simply be 0 0.3. It's worth noting that, of course, all of these values can be um, altered based off of the literature that's, that has been published. I'll simply press apply and then close. Now that we have assigned material properties to not only our scapula, but our glenoid implant, we can now go ahead and export our volumetric meshes to then import them into Abacus. To do this, I'll go up to the file tab and then simply go to the export function. And then as you can see, you can go to meshes and then Abacus, which will then of course bring up this export window here. So with the mesh tab uh, highlighted, you can simply left click on both the glenoid and scapula whilst holding shift. And then for this, I'm going to select the single output file as well as that creating assembly. And then we simply need to add it to this list. And to do so, simply a case of clicking add. And then as you can see as well, you can also select your output directory. With that all sorted, you can now simply go ahead and click OK. For completion, now that we have exported that input file from Mimix, I have now imported that input file into Apicus by simply going to the File, Import, and then Model option. Now, as you can see, our scapula along with our glenoid implant have been imported into the 3D window, of course, obtaining the same mesh that we stated um, in 3Matic. But as well as that, and building on top of it, you can see over in my object tree list over here that each subsection has its own material assigned to it. So each material that we define within Mimix has been automatically assigned to that specific subsection within Abacus, which of course saves lots and lots of time setting up the simulation in the first place. I then gone on to run a very simple simulation whereby I simulated a simple force directly onto the glenoid face here to then show the stress variation throughout the scapula.